Well, as you can see, I still have a lot of supplies left, and I wanted to try and build a swamp cooler. In my last project, I discussed my YouTube research on homemade cooling systems. One such system was a do-it-yourself swamp cooler. This is Desert Sun O2's version. He has later made a video on how he has improved upon his build. Now next, I saw uh, Make It Mike's version. I think he thought his was an improvement over Desert Sun's ver uh, design, but I don't know how because he had his um, fam blowing air in the wrong direction. But he did use some hardware fabric to keep his swamp sponge in place. I'm going to try to build Desert Sun O2's version while utilizing Make It Mike's idea of using hardware cloth to secure the swamp sponge. Okay, let's just uh, build a swamp cooler here. If you notice in Desert Sun, he had all these holes uh, drilled in. He had two rows of them. And uh, of course, I gotta do the same thing. But I kinda wanna do three rows, but you'll see what's going on later. So I got my drill, my core bit, and uh, just start drilling away, you know. It was a tedious task, but um, it got done. Here I got the first row starting on the second row. And this was a pain in the butt trying to get all these little plastic discs out. And so I got two rows, but I need to pour in two gallons of water. Why two gallons? I don't know. That's what Desert Sun said. So what we're really trying to do is see if um, where the water line mark is. And I really want to get that third row of holes in there so I have the maximum amount of um, air flowing through the uh, sponge or the evaporative thing, the evaporative sponge. So there's, there's my uh, uh, water line. <clears throat> and um, so it looks like I have enough uh, space for um, another row of holes here. So this is just some screen material um, that Desert Sun said to use and uh, to keep the water from um, coming out of those little holes. So I just kind of cut to fit and I'm using um, some of this silicon um, glue and I'm going to use that to uh, as an adhesive to keep it on the inside of the um, bucket. So I'll just set that aside and let it dry. This is my evaporative um, sponge material that the uh, water is going to soak through. Again, I got to cut this to size. And I'm going to use, uh, I'll make it Mike's idea of using this hardware cloth, give it a nice tight fit along the uh, inside. It's kind of difficult to work with because you got to do a lot of cutting with wire cutters. But with some persistence, uh, you'll get it done. And I kind of held it in place with these uh, um, ties, wire ties. And but these buckets are more of a, a cone instead of a cylinder, so I had to cut some more of this foam material, evaporative foam or whatever sponge, and. Uh, shove it on into that little area that was lacking. And I got a little uh, T, T connector there and I start cutting my uh, plastic to fit. And there's my little pump. 
and uh, cut another piece of plastic to connect to the pump, to the T-connector, then started hooking up my uh, electrics to the pump. Of course, the next thing you had to do was uh, punch a bunch of holes into the tubing, and I just used this oversized thumbtack here. Um, some say do it every inch, some say do it every centimeter. I did it about every centimeter. Then I put it all back in place again. And I got my bucket of water and I'm getting ready to fill it up and do a little bit of testing. But while that's uh, priming itself, I'm cutting notches in the bucket and notches in the uh, hardware fabric so that when I put the lid on there, um, it'll fit nice and tight. Here I have a template for uh, the hole I'm gonna cut on the lid. And uh, probably heard me say all this before, you know, Use your template, draw your line, and of course you know the next step is to uh, draw a pilot hole. And then uh, take the jigsaw to it. Hey, perfect fit. So I put all that in place. put my heavy-duty Apollo inductive fan on top and then I got uh, some duct elbow an elbow for ducting so I could um, you know change the direction of the airflow now it's time to test so let's see what we can come up with so folks let's have a quick little tour of the uh, swamp cooler here <clears throat> All uh, hooked up to the electrics, both the uh, fan and the pump. And I have uh, the exhaust uh, pointing out where you know I can change the direction where I want the air to go to. And it's starting to feel cool. So let's uh, do a little testing here. Right now, the uh, air at the exhaust is 84.4 before the fan is turned on. I turned on the fan and um, things started to cool down. Got it down to uh, 79.9. And little by little, the temperature decreased and it's going down to 76.1. And after some more time, another minute or so, we were down to uh, 75.0. But I never was able to get below 74.5. So can it be used to cool down the tent? Well, this guy thinks so. Oh yeah, guys, check this one out. Pretty wild. That's it for this project. We only have one more AC project to go, so bear with me.